and my hands were tied. The White House Counsel's Office said, you know, you cannot discuss this when those revelations became known that they had been involved in the leak. And I said at the time, you know, someday I look forward to talking about what I know. Scott McClellan defending himself on the Today Show this morning. McClellan himself is the only one who knows why he did what he did. As for whether he did the right thing by writing the book, let's talk about that. CNN senior political analyst David Gergen is here, and Bruce Weinstein, ethics columnist for Businessweek.com. Bruce, in, in your blog for us today, you said that he had an ethical obligation to write this book. That's right. Why? Because there is no statute of limitations on telling the truth. And yes, it's important to be loyal, but it's more important to be truthful, especially when their lives are at stake, as they are in this case. Uh, assume, so he, you're assuming that what he's saying is all truthful. Well, yes, and in fact, there was a CNN quick poll done this morning. 95% of the people surveyed this morning on American Morning said that they believe McClellan is more credible than the White House. Not a scientific survey, but it does say something about his credibility. David, are you surprised by the reaction of the White House and its, its various emissaries, paid and unpaid, who have fanned out on television, uh, like military advisors, it seems, to, to, to you know, basically attack Scott McClellan? Is it, is it kind of predictable, or is this surprising? It's unusually intense, Anderson, and it does raise the question of why. Because, you know, often when you're in this White House in this situation, what you do, if you don't say anything at all, you just sort of hope it goes away. But if you attack, as they've been doing, then it gives the story legs, as we say, and it goes on for a couple of days, as this story has. It does raise, raise the question of why. Uh, my speculation, there has been talk, Anderson, that the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, led by Senator Jay Rockefeller, is about to issue a report on the, what they found about the run-up to the war. If I were sitting in the White House, worried about what Jay Rockefeller may say, say I, and Scott McClellan came out with his book on the edge of that, I might want to carpet bomb Scott McClellan. To, to, to drown him out and make it appear so unimaginable that this, all this happened, that, you, that that has a carryover effect in case Rockefeller comes after you. I'm not going to ask you about the ethics of carpet bombing Scott McClellan. <laughs> I, I sense it's not <laughs> ethical. Well, well, uh, but, carpet but, bombing is book. <laughs> yeah, the book, okay. But, but, uh, if it, I may just say, yeah. what, what's fascinating about the hue and cry over the last several days is that there's been so much focus on the motivation for mm. McClellan writing this. You know, was he disgruntled? Is he doing it to cash in? As opposed Does to what he he's feel guilty? It, that's right, but there's very little criticism about the truth content. And if you had to weigh which question is more important, the psychological or the ethical, isn't the ethical issue really more important in this case? Well, I, I, I just have this question, Bruce. I, it does seem to me that there are ethical uh, obligations to, to get the truth out. And over time, you do want a historical record about an administration to be right. But there are also, as you well know, a number of relationships that we say in that relationship it is important to maintain privacy. Doctor, patient, a, a therapist, client, a lawyer, client. In many relationships we say whatever the truth is that's going on in there, that the society has a larger uh, interest in maintaining the confidentiality well, it, 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 of that relationship. Is he violating that by writing this book? And I think that you know, for the effective functioning of a White House, it's important that the president and people around him not feel that that not only is it kiss and tell, it's kiss and run to the publisher and get but your in money. The same well, no, way that, but but, but, wait, but in, in, the same, in the same way that a source gives up uh, protection if that source lies to a reporter, d if, if uh, a politician lies to a, one of their advisors, do they give up that... that That's an interesting question. Well, well, well no, the, the thing is, in a democracy, the press secretary is supposed to be a beacon of truth. There should, uh, the press secretary is not a shill for the administration or shouldn't be a smokescreen. And in a democracy... I, where have you been? Well, I know. I know <laughs> have you been watching, ideally, have you watched television ideally. in the last, say, 20 years? <laughs> and, and, and actually, there's some interesting take-home messages here because the next press secretary will be very careful about going against his or her conscience because we are looking to the press secretary for the truth, not for the party line. But this is, not, uh, this is a nonpartisan issue. Ethics is the ultimate nonpartisan. My, my, my concern with that, look, I think you're right about basic ethics, but my concern with this in terms of working with the next president with a press secretary, the next president's not going to want to have the press secretary in the room to have a, 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 a be there for... she is but honest. But it's not no, just no, 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 The same could be said that. about any member. I mean, anybody can write one of these books. Uh, That's right. Right. So, I mean, it's not just the press secretary who doesn't want... They don't want the press secretary but to be But if you're honest, you have nothing to be afraid about, no, no, right? No, wait, but, but no, 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 no. That's not... In every administration, they're going to... I know. I'm talking about ideal. Why is it too much to ask for the truth? I mean, you know that Warren Beatty did this comedy a few years ago that was a satire because it was premised on the audacious idea that a politician would speak the truth 
truth. Why just, should that be a comedy? I want to read something that, uh, that Scott McClellan said about Richard Clark, a former Bush official who wrote a book. And this is what Scott McClellan said at the time that he wrote that Richard Clark came out with this book. Scott McClellan said, why all of a sudden, if he had all these grave concerns, did he not raise the, them sooner? This is one and a half years after he left the administration. Now, all of a sudden, he's raising these grave concerns that he claims he had. Yes, he Just should have spoken so. up earlier, but you know what? It's never too late to right or wrong. Yes, he should have come out earlier, but does that mean because he didn't come out earlier, he should never speak the truth to power? Yeah, Absolutely. Well, well, what we, among other things, <laughs> as you well know, there are many versions of truth. Oh, no, what? And, no, and I, this I, is version I of the truth. No, 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 no there he is says a that in the book. truth. He says this is his truth. truth. This is his take, and, it, and it's a limited view of what the truth is. But there is, look, I think if there is outright lying, and uh, the country was led into war by outright lying, then somebody has an obligation to blow the whistle on that. I absolutely agree with that. But as a general proposition, working around a president, I think a president, like, like most CEOs, like most people running organizations, has a right to express to expect a certain amount of privacy and also not have somebody t going out and talking about all their flaws. Yeah. No man is a, is a hero to his valet, as we, the saying we gotta goes. Leave, we're going to leave, leave it there. there. Uh, Bruce okay. Martin, we'll, we'll catch yeah. you. Good to have you. David Gergen, always good to have Thank you as well. Anderson. A lot on our blog about this, uh, both, uh, both men blog, so uh, check that out, the 360 blog.